Now, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association is taking issue with David Lametti's approach, and joining us right now is Eva Krajewska. She is counsel for the CCLA. Eva, thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, Michael. Nice to see you. Now, clearly, uh, you've said so in, in statement, at least the, the organization has, that you are disappointed by the Attorney General's uh, decision to invoke solicitor-client privilege. How does that hamper, in your opinion, the work of this commission? So there have now been a number of ministers and uh, Jody Thomas, the National Security Advisor, who all uh, mentioned in their testimony that when they were deliberating on whether or not to invoke the Emergencies Act at Cabinet and at the IRG, they considered a legal opinion that they received from the DOJ. And uh, they've claimed solicitor-client privilege over that legal opinion. And what's all, so that's part one, but part two is the way that all of these witnesses have justified the invocation of the Emergencies Act is by stating that they, they received a certain legal view or legal opinion of how to interpret the CSIS Act. So in order to invoke the Emergencies Act, part of the legal test is that cabinet has to be satisfied that there is a threat to the national security of Canada as defined in the CSIS Act. And that's become a real point of contention during these hearings because a number of uh, people have kind of spoken to that interpretation. But we don't actually know what the DOJ said to cabinet. We don't know what DOJ advised. We don't know how they interpreted that. And so when Commissioner Rulo is saying are we to take it on good faith that you received an opinion that justified this invocation? You know, are we just supposed to take that at your word, right? Or did the DOJ say, well, there's lots of risks with this, right? There's lots of risks, and this is the political risk you're taking in doing this. So it, it does raise a very big question because the commission, the, sorry, the, the ministers are relying on this to say that they acted in good faith, but they're not giving it to the commission or the public for the public and the commission to be able to assess whether cabinet was actually acting in good faith. Okay, but correct me if I'm wrong here. Does it matter at all that we heard from Lametti yesterday that, that the act should not or is not limited by this uh, CISA's definition of a threat uh, to the country? It is. It, he agrees that it is. He, agree, he absolutely agrees that the act says by incorporation that it's a threat to the country. He agrees with that. The issue, the dispute is he says it's not CSIS who assesses the threat, it's the governor and council. Okay, that's a, that's a legal argument. But I think the question is, is it still the same threshold? Like he's saying the CSIS act says there's a threshold before you can conduct surveillance on Canadian citizens. And we would say whatever that threshold is to conduct surveillance on Canadian citizens, it must be as high or higher if you are going to be invoking the Emergencies Act in order to suspend civil liberties across the country. Now, can't the Commission decide if a legal bar is met just by looking at the circumstances as outlined by ministers, if not the exact wording of the DOJ's advice? Well, that is the position that they are being put in, which is, you know, you're going to have to just rely on the evidence that's put forward. But the commission, the, sorry, the DOJ and the government have also waived a number of privileges. So they normally would, normally cabinet confidence would cover all inputs that went to cabinet. And they waived that uh, in order to, uh, to, enable the work of the commission. So, you know, it's interesting that the DOJ has chosen to waive some privileges in some circumstances, but has decided not to waive other privileges in other circumstances. And they are, you know, in my mind, cherry picking some of this. And, you know, they assert privilege over some of Lametti's testimony when they feel like they don't like what he's saying, but then they let him provide legal views and legal opinions on other parts of his testimony. So what's the practical impact then? Given that this is the tactic that the Justice Minister has taken uh, to, to, to essentially invoke solicitor-client privilege, what's the practical effect on the final report, do you think? I think we'll, we're going to see what the effect is. We're going. The commission, you know, may they, they commission can 
write it in a way to say, you know, based on the evidence we've heard and based on what we were able to access, these are our conclusions, right? They, they can say based on what we've heard and what we were able to access. Um, so that is that is the th that is the implication. I'm not sure. But an know, incomplete picture. Somebody, but an incomplete picture. Your fear is. It may be. They it they could say the commission could say. You know we we, you know we are disappointed or we felt like they should have waived this privilege or provided us with this legal opinion on the basis that they've been relying upon it. And there is there is law to support that. There is law to support that if you go out and. You know, rely on the legal opinion that you've potentially waived that solicitor client privilege. Ava, thank you for this. Really appreciate the time tonight. Thank you, Michael. Bye bye.